Hello everybody and welcome to today's album review where today we're going to be reviewing U2's album called All That You Can't Leave Behind. Um, so Brett, as you made the pick, do you want to go ahead and tell us what you thought of it? Yeah, I'll go first. So obviously we both had heard of U2, um, quite common theme for the last couple of albums we've done, very big artists and there's no doubt in U2 are a massive artist and I think I said in the last video you know I know quite a lot of their stuff but the stuff that probably most people know in terms of their back catalogue don't really know a lot of that really um, there were um, at least sort of three songs on the album that I had previously recognized and we have spoken about before once you know the song it's very difficult to not be influenced by those particular songs because you're already kind of familiar and know them um, that being said, though, overall, the album, and <laughs> no surprise at all for you and probably other listeners, I did quite enjoy. Um, I don't think, looking down, there was any songs that I, again, would say I really didn't like. Um, there were, it was quite an, an on-par album. It was quite the same throughout, apart from maybe bar two or three different songs, which, again, didn't mind that, didn't mind that at all. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a song I didn't really enjoy and it's definitely an album I could have listened to again, which, funny enough, I did. I did listen to it on um, three different occasions just to get more of an idea of it. Um, and from it, there would probably be four songs that I would take on to put onto my own playlist. But again, that's not disregarding a lot of the other songs. All of them I could have definitely listened to and um, quite enjoyed. But I do get the feeling if you don't like the sort of style of U2 and what they're about. And then I can imagine a lot of people probably wouldn't like um, that. But for, like, for me personally, I had nothing against it um, at all. There was something quite interesting where I think a previous album, um, they had a previous album called Pop, which was a bit more tech, techno, a bit more electronic, not in an extreme way. But I think there's a lot of fans who probably didn't like that. And from what I was reading, a lot of people then enjoyed this album because it was going back to more traditional kind of um you two so to speak okay um so as for me um i would echo a lot of those comments um probably similar to you in the sense of obviously i knew who you two you two were but certainly didn't know their back catalog only knew their big hits uh, i don't think i'd listened to any of their albums before may possibly have one of their albums at home from years ago, not sure. Um, but overall, it was an enjoyable album for the most part. Um, we will obviously talk about individual songs shortly. Um, but I would say I think it's the first seven songs in general that I quite liked. And then I thought it went a bit downhill from there. Like I said, we'll talk about those um, shortly. So probably glad we listened to this album rather than the previous one you just mentioned which I didn't know about which was you said is more techno probably wouldn't have been like that so much so I overall I just thought it was a good kind of rock rock pop album I thought it was quite nice and soft in general um, apart from maybe the song Elevation um, so the first three songs which we'll talk about again as I just said shortly I had previously heard of whereas I think all the other songs I was hearing for the first time. So yeah, overall, probably similar to you. Just quite quite enjoyed it. But there were a bit of a disappointment towards the end, I'd say. Yeah, I think the thing with you two, obviously they do come under sort of rock pop. Uh, but I think what we probably like about it is the fact you can probably hear Lee Singh and Bono actually singing the lyrics. Even if you don't probably know what he's singing about, you can still get a feeling for what it's all about so it's not like hardcore rock in any sense there it's definitely more commercial more pop style i would say yeah so going through the songs first one beautiful day so i remember talking about this at the end of our um album choice when we we picked this album um and saying it's a song i hadn't i really liked but i haven't heard it for a long time so i wrote down great song and straight away, in my head, it reminded me of um, the Premiership 
which, <laughs> which was um, for all that don't know or don't remember, this was what replaced match of the day, if you like football. Um, it was when BBC lost a contract and ITV won it. They started showing the highlights package of uh, Premier League football, and this was the the theme song. And straight away, that was the first thing that came in my heart, in my yeah. mind, the Premiership. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I wrote there as well. Um, it's a song I didn't know and I have heard quite a few times. And it's funny, so when this song came on, I was thinking, oh, surely there can't be a song that's going to beat this song on this album. Surely this is going to be the best song um, on the album. Really, really, um, really, really liked it. And apparently that was our 14th number one in Ireland. But yeah, only their fourth number one in the UK, which I found quite interesting. Okay, and just to be clear, I download, this is the song I, I downloaded. I took this one. Well, I haven't downloaded it yet, but I will. So you said you're going to take four songs. Yeah, this would be one of my playlists as well, yeah. Second song, again, when I saw it written down, I knew it was, I was, it was familiar to me. So stuck in a moment you can't get out of. But I just put down another good song. Again, it's a song I hadn't heard for many years. Probably don't know it quite as well as Beautiful Day, but know it well enough to remember it and, and like it. And I'm going to download it. This is the second song that I'm going to take. And, my, and the last song that I'm going to take, by the way. It's just these two that I'm taking. Okay. Uh, yeah, like you, song I recognised, had heard it come down, obviously not as much as Beautiful Day. Um, and at first I thought it was just a good standard average song, but actually, again, listen to it more often. I actually started to like it more than Beautiful Day in a way. I thought it was actually a lot better um, than I thought, really. So I would say I probably prefer this song uh, I have a beautiful day. Uh, but yeah, I was, that's why I, I was a little surprised by that. But yeah, it's definitely on my um, playlist there. And again, did a little bit of research. So apparently it's about, it's to do with um, the lead singer of In Excess um, who committed suicide. And it's actually Bono singing about that, but not so much about the suicide, but more about um, he wished he had an argument with him to, you know, snap out of whatever he was feeling and doing and wish he had that. Um, conversation with which is an interesting take to sing a song about that it doesn't regret singing about it and it just just thought it was a real interesting take. it made me sort of when I then listened to the song then the third time really looking at different lights um, as well really it's about you know two friends who always in fights but wish they had another fight about a particular situation which may or may have not led to um, his friend committing suicide okay third song was the last song that, I, that I'd heard of and recognised. I recognised it again straight away from the, the title. Um, I put down familiar chorus, but not, not really for me. It was a slow bit um, after, a, after the loud chorus he part. So it kind of went a bit quite loud and then it went slow. Uh, it was all right, but not as good as the previous two for me. I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, not so keen on, on it. Yeah, I can see that. Again, this is also the final song that I recognised as well. Um, I recognised them also because it was in the Tomb Raider movie, uh, which I quite liked. I was a big fan of Tomb Raider at the time. Um, yeah, for me, it's probably one of the weakest songs for me personally on the album as well. But nothing, again, I think it's a good song. It fits for what it was, purpose it was for. What it was for. Um, so, yeah, nothing really against it, but yeah, just... Well, no, I, I prefer definitely a lot more other songs on the on the album than that one. Okay, next one was Walk On. So now we're into unfamiliar territory for me, maybe for you as well. Um, I put down quite good. I like the chorus. I, I didn't go as far as downloading it. Maybe it's probably one of those songs I might have to listen to a few times to make a decision on. But I, yeah, I thought it was quite a good song. Yeah, same. So apparently this song was a released song. Uh, but like you, I, I didn't recognise it. I hadn't heard it before. And this was this point I was going, actually, I really like this. And again, Beautiful Day was probably now dropping down this, what I found quite interesting. So this was one I'm also going to put on my playlist. And I do think, yeah, if you listen to it maybe a couple more times and maybe get more familiar with it, I think it could be very much like Stuck in the Moment You Can't Get Out, one that you would make so to put on a, a playlist. But yeah, really, really, um, really like that. Okay. Then we had Kite. I, I noted down it was a slow start. And again, not not a bad song, you know, like the previous one. If I maybe need a little bit more time to for it to, you know, grow onto me, potentially, I could really like that, mate. Maybe I don't know. But from the first listening, yeah. it just sounded quite quite decent. 
yeah, this was very similar to me, like Walk On. And again, it's just the final song I was going to put on my playlist. Um, and again, I think since this was the second and third time, it, was, it grew on me a little bit more. Same with some of the other songs as well. Um, but yeah, definitely had that same sort of feel to Walk On, which also had the same sort of feel to um, Stuck in the Moment as well. And I think what's interesting with you two is that they are they like to put quite a few sort of political messages within their songs. That's where they get a lot of their influences from. Um, and I think it does feel and show in a lot of some of the lyrics. And you can just, I don't know, it just feels like you can feel there's real meaning sometimes behind. So even though I don't actually know, I didn't go too much in details with that because it's not about us, but actually listening to the song and what we think of the songs. Um, but that's how I felt with that there. So um, yeah, that was my fourth one that I was going to put on my playlist. Okay. In a little while, again, it was a one another song that I just put down. Not bad, also quite a slow kind of song. Um, yeah, quite liked it. Again, probably from the first listening, hasn't done enough for me to want to download that one, but decent nonetheless. Yeah, another sort of decent standard, good song for the album. Again, just almost following the same series as last previous songs. Again, nothing against it. I could have easily probably put it on. Play this well, but I think at this point, I think, well, out of all the ones I had listened to, it just sort of did make a list. But again, maybe if I listened to more often and in different environments, different ways, then maybe it would have different um, effects there. But yeah, again, really good standard song, really. Okay, next one Wild Honey. I just put down a fairly good song from what I remember of it. Again, I quite liked it. Um, again, it's one of those I need to listen to again to see how much I really do like it. Um, yeah, kind of a bit poppy maybe this one, I don't know, but pretty, pretty good. Yeah, uh, I sort of put that face there saying it suddenly sounds a little bit different now, so at least I thought maybe the album's going to go all the way through like that, it could get a bit repetitive, which it kind of did, so we we'll see why some of the song scores and you didn't enjoy as much. Um, but then funny enough, again looked into it and apparently this song was put in place there for that very reason um to sort of mix it up a little bit um which i found really interesting because that's exactly how i felt with that so it feels like they also taken things into comparison in, into mind about how the album should be listened to and enjoyed and yeah so that particular song was put in that particular place to break things up a little bit okay now that was as good as it got for me um i was enjoying the album up to this point and then the next last five songs, I, I thought it went downhill dramatically. Um, Peace on Earth. I put down not so enjoyable, poor chorus, didn't like the chorus. It was a slow, a slow tempoed song just with a, a bad chorus for me. Mm. So yeah, I did feel like I was going back to the previous. Again, nothing overly against it, but again, I think compared to the others, it wasn't as good. As then. It's funny enough, I actually did put a point where, so it says maybe actually if you weren't sort of enjoying you two at this point, I can see why you may start not to enjoy this side of things as well. Um, I don't know why I wrote that there. Um, but um, yeah, like I said, it, it felt for me it was just a okay, good song, but just not as good as some of the previous ones. When I look at the world, I'll be honest, I, I kind of lost my way a little bit here. I think I might have been doing something else when I was listening and the song kind of finished and I hadn't really <laughs> noted anything down. I just put, okay. I, I think I was, this one maybe wasn't, wasn't so bad, this one. This is maybe more like some of the previous ones a little bit. Um, I don't think, it, basically it didn't really do much to, take, to, to grab my attention, but I didn't dislike it so, either at the same time. That's why I kind of didn't write anything down for it. Yeah, so the song I put here, there was a sort of bit more sort of electronic feel to it, um, less than rock, which may be influenced from their previous experimental when they were doing things there, which I didn't mind. Um, this made it a little bit sort of different there. But otherwise, nothing really stood out for me um, on that song, apart from the fact it had a bit of electronic music. I think I put the reason what the song was about. Um, it was something to do... Um, a person dealing with a French tragedy. So again, a bit mm. depressing kind of element to it there. Um, I think the only reason I ended up in love stuff is because there's probably nothing much else I could have put there. So yeah, a little bit of electronic to it. Didn't mind it. It's again, not as good as some of the other ones I've listened to. So you mentioned that it didn't stand out for you, but I'd say the next song, New York, did stand out for me. Not that I liked it. I didn't like it. 
I had, I've got quite a few notes for this one. Firstly, it was the longest <laughs> Scott track on the album. Not, not hugely long. I think it was about five and a half minutes. But I put down Unusual Start. It was um, with the, you know, just musical, what do you call it, instrumental. Took a while for the words to get going. Started off very low key. So I kind of thought it was going to remain like that. But then suddenly livened up. Yeah. The, yeah. And I really didn't like the chorus. I think the chorus, the New York part of the chorus, really let it down. Um, interesting song in general with lots of different parts to it. I'd say it's quite experimental. Um, yeah, just an interesting song that didn't do it for me though. No, I can, I can again. I can't. I can see why he probably said that. I, again, I didn't mind it um, uh, too much. There, it was interesting. It was released, you know, eleven months before nine eleven. Not that it has anything linked to anything influenced with that there. But yeah, weird sound effects, instrumental stuff, definitely say more sort of maybe experimental song of the album, which again, I can't criticize them for doing because I'd rather, you know, at least try something. And if you find something you really like, great. If you don't, it's not end of the world. Um, again, when I listened to it a couple of times, I did start to appreciate it a little bit more. Not enough to be better than any of the other songs on there, but. Um, it was hard for me to really dislike or hate it. And then we went on to Grace, which was the last song on, I think, the standard album, maybe the one that was released in the US, maybe. Um, so this one, is a, I put down similar start to New York. It was quite sort of an instrumental start. And I was wondering if it was going to do the same sort of thing as New York, like really take off. But this one didn't. It was a softer, kind of slower song, started talking rather than singing. Um, and yeah, the song never really got going. I guess it's, it was the end of the album. So like we've noticed with a lot of these songs, they're kind of calmer, softer, just to kind of finish an album off. Yeah, that's exactly sort of what I put there. I think you two are the type of band who, you know, are thinking more about the album, so to speak. And I think it was just a, a nice way to end the album. Nice low ending song, Again, nothing against it at all. Very listenable. Again, by second, third time, did enjoy it still. Um, but again, as I've been saying throughout this whole thing, just wasn't as good as some of the other songs previously, but again, nothing against it at all. Nice way to end the album, the standard album. And then we had the, the extras of the bonus track, which I think was for Japan, the UK, was it Australia? There was a number of countries yeah. that had this track. Um, the Ground Beneath Her Feet. I put, there's a lot of instrumentals going on. Um, but I just didn't like the song at all. I didn't like the, the chorus. The chorus for me is always the big thing, you know, because you need a catchy chorus. And just, no, I just didn't didn't like this one. Uh, yeah, uh, again, didn't hate it. It was interesting. Um, as a result, maybe go look more into it. And um, funny enough, this was actually a song from a movie. It's a movie that you two actually did the soundtrack for. So it's a movie called Million Dollar, uh, Million Dollar Hotel. Have you ever heard of it, Lee? At all? Uh, Million Dollar Hotel? I don't think so. No, there's probably good reason it didn't do very, very well at all. Even though it had big actors like Mel Gibson in it, um, the parody just flopped, really. Just didn't do it at all. Um, even uh, Bono makes an appearance in it as well. Um, it was a number one song in Iceland, funny enough. Iceland really took on to that song there. Um, yeah, I think it just sort of goes with the movie, really. Just don't think it did too much there. And I'm surprised why it wasn't just on the album normally. Um, and it's interesting, again, an album where you've actually got two songs that appear in movies, which I thought was quite interesting um, as well. As for the song itself, hard to say, again, that I hate it. It was okay, but um, definitely could have been definitely dead I suppose yeah so I guess we had quite similar views on that we like the first half of the album probably more than the second second half um, I think when you look at it though like the first few songs were the big big hits that they released which is I guess quite common isn't it for bands to do to put their bigger songs at the beginning and then towards the end maybe more experimental stuff so I, I see the logic in how they've you know, they, they put each track into the album. Um, so there was variety. It wasn't all the same. I always, always appreciate that. But maybe with this particular album, I wish maybe they 
there wasn't so much variety. I, mean, you know, I wish they just they, they just kept going with the you know the good quality songs that they they'd had from the first half of the album. Um, but the overall, I can't be too critical. Um, a, I've taken two songs away from the from the album for a start, which is always a good thing. Um, and yeah, over, overall, it was it was enjoyable. Just a shame about the the last I don't know four or five songs there. Yeah, again, sort of echo sort of what you're saying there. I said overall, really like the album. Definitely, as I said, I've already listened to it a couple of times already. Would definitely um, be happy to sort of listen to it um, again. Um, I don't think I can say really more than that, really. And I said I've got the four songs I'll be putting onto um, my playlist. Okay, then. Well, that concludes um, our album review today. Of you two. Um, it's the album called it's got a long name hasn't it um, yeah. all that you can't leave behind what you can't leave behind yeah okay so join us on wednesday to find out what um our next um album review is going to be of so we'll see you on wednesday guys bye <laughs>